caregiver to the rhinos. These rhinos represent uh, sort of what is happening to our world in terms of losing species to extinction. Najin, who is 31 years old, is mother to 21-year-old Fatu. These two northern white rhinos are the remnants of the once mighty species that has been phased out by indiscriminate poaching. With the two females not having the ability to conceive, the species is considered extinct. Good girl. Witnessing extinction every day is very heartbreaking. Um, and, and this is the kind of environment we're inheriting. Uh, you know, um, uh, a distracted environment, which basically means there's so much that we might miss in the future if we continue losing species. And if you look at this right now, they're such beautiful, charismatic, prehistoric looking animals that if we lose, uh, we basically, um, there's so much effect that is going to happen in the ecosystem, and there's no single species that exists on itself. So there's a ripple effect of losing rhinos and one rhino, two rhinos. If they all go extinct, there's so much changes that are going to be seen in our environment. The death of Sudan in 2018, the last male northern white rhino gave the rangers more passion to protect their subspecies. Munda says being around Najin and Fatu is a constant reminder of how poachers have hurt the animal kingdom and justifies the reason why they have to protect Najin and Fatu for the generations to come. We'll go down the history being some of the people that witnessed as species go down to extinction. And these are thoughts that go through your mind. Are they safe? What, what is going to happen? Even though we work on shifts, we have people looking after them uh, during the night. You still worry for them because they're, they're such beautiful beings that you don't want to, to lose. So we have all these thoughts coming through um, and, and we try to wake up every day and leverage that to be uh, something that can be an inspiration to continue caring for them. He alludes that no animal species can survive in isolation and the repo effect of losing one species to the ecosystem is dire. Thus, the relationship with the animals here is more personal. And it's a relationship that definitely grows even much more, realizing that they are the last of their kind. And so this, that sort of emotional attachment that gives us more reason to care for them. Mwenda, the closest ranger to the two humongous mammals, says Najin takes after her dad. She is quiet, relaxed, and adores tummy rubs. Good girls. To the point that she rolls over on her back to enjoy them properly. On the contrary, Fatu is more unpredictable and shows sudden aggression when rattled. Can't wait until um, a species get down to the last two that we can do something about it. Kenya, we are so rich in terms of um, flora and fauna that we have, and we really need to take care of what we have. And I think taking the lesson that we really need to act before it's too late is, I think, the most fundamental thing that I've taken and I would want everyone to take because, um, well, for rhinos, we, we can be able to take them to the lab, but think about the climate change and everything that is happening. There are things that are irreversible that will happen. This is Najin, and she's 31 years old, the mother to Fatu. Both of them are the only remaining northern white rhinos in the entire world. Conservationists here are clinging on the hope that Fatu and Najin will have surrogates that will continue with the species of these northern white rhinos in Kenya and in the entire world. Mwenda's worry is having an unsuccessful in vitro fertilization aimed at reintroducing the subspecies back to the ecosystem. Eggs have already been harvested from the rhinos and embryos created from semen harvested from two northern male white rhinos before they passed on. The best thing is to take the lessons, something that scientists have taken. If they fail succeeding breeding these northern white rhinos, there's so much they have learned that can be replicated to other species of rhinos that are on the brink of extinction. If you think about the Sumatran and the Javan rhinos, we have less than 100 left of each. The rangers with the most challenging assignment are those that protect the rhinos for a 24-hour period. 
They consist of the anti-poaching dog unit. Scuff. Can't harm us. No, no, no. It's very gentle. The area surveillance team and the patrol team, their biggest challenge is dealing with poachers and have to keep the community engaged to aid in the anti-poaching efforts. Often, digital, you have armed guys with our K9 assisted by team. So this team will go there within the area of scene and they look whether there is what has happened. If there is like a suspicious footprint, you see ours is boot. Yeah. Most of the time you find boots. Mm -hmm. And also if you find a boot within area and maybe you suspect this is not be ours, mm -hmm. we have those talkie talkie. The man will communicate direct to our our lady man here and she'll go back to his computer and look who have been passed there for maybe two, three days, mm -hmm. and you say, no, that is not our team. I believe the community is one of the greatest security we have, so we have very good relations with community, something that we've tried to foster by supporting key pillars like health, education, water, infrastructure within our surrounding communities, as well as agriculture, depends on the community, and mostly poachers filter through the communities. So if we have good relations with the community, they are the first people to see suspicious people around our fences and, and, and alert us. We carried out a search where I had to act as a potential poacher. Assisted by the dog unit team, we entered deep into the conservancy and the sniffer dogs were charged to go after us. Owing to their great expertise in training, the dog traced us to where we were hiding and alerted the rangers. Yeah. Uh -huh. The dog has just found us here where I was in my ego. I was so surprised. But, well, the rangers here are doing a commendable job in protecting our wildlife and especially the white and the black rhinos here at Old Pajeta. Uh, I being a dog hadra, I look or, or allow to see whether it will go 360 degree mm -hmm. to look whether there's any left scented article within that area or else there is suspicious footprint. Mm -hmm. So that's the one that I just give the scent to the dog and the dog will show us the direction of the pushers where they have gone. The rangers here attribute their successes to the sharp dogs who come in handy to assist in the anti-poaching efforts. We hit several rounds of ammunition and a fully loaded magazine, and the sniffer dog did an excellent job of locating every ammunition where it was hidden. Within the conservancy, there are tens of gravestones to mark the deaths of rhinos killed by poachers. Rangers here say the tombstones are a big reminder of why they are at all Pejeta on any given day. They made this place a stopover for any visiting visitor to appreciate the need of conserving, protecting and safeguarding our wildlife. You look at the rhinos here, the plagues and how horribly some of them died due to poachers, um, you know, being uh, shot and their horns hacked off and left to die. It's just some of horrible ways that these animals have died and I think every time we come here it reminds us that we really have to do a lot and that's why we also made it a stopover here in Opejita so that visiting guests can stop and see the reason why we need to protect our rhinos and why they are worth more lives than when they are dead. For Najin and Fatu it is a dangerous living in their sunset years. All hope now lies in science to create and bring back another population of northern white rhinos back to the ecosystem. Good girl, come on, come on girl. Good girl, come on. Walking around the cemetery and seeing the huge numbers of black and white rhinos that have been killed, it is quite emotional reading through the epitaphs, like this one here for this uh, black rhino here was called Kaka. And the epitaph here says that the Kakas found a day after rhino killed by a poison dart and both horns were missing. By the time Kaka was dying, he was almost my age mate. And it's quite sad and shows the, a lot of work we have to do to protect our rhinos, especially the endangered ones and all the animals and especially the wildlife. My name is Mwangi Maina.
for TV 47 from All Pejeta Conservancy in Laikipia County. Well, thank you so much, Mongi.